Hello, this is the first lecture in the Law and Ethics course, and it is covering values as a context for therapy. The objectives for this lecture is to begin by considering the influence of values in the therapy room. How do your values impact you and your client? Secondly, to assess your attitudes and beliefs pertaining to ethical and professional issues that you will encounter as a clinician. And third, to explore the development of awareness of one's values um, and gaining insight into how those might impact therapy. So to begin, I would like us to consider um, a dinner party. Think about the following potential dinner guests for just a minute. And as you're going through them, try to consider which ones make you think twice about having them in your home for your dinner party, which ones you experience empathy or compassion for, and where you think these feelings might come from. So just take a moment to do that. So what this exercise is helping us to start to consider are some of the deeply held values, beliefs, stereotypes, uh, opinions that we hold about different people or different groups of people uh, that may end up being triggered uh, clinically if we are faced with certain clients that we maybe have some more difficulties uh, working with or we have certain perspectives on. Um, let's consider a different case. So where do you stand on this case? You've been seeing a client for a couple of months who you're aware makes her money as a prostitute and by dealing drugs. You feel you have developed a therapeutic connection with this client. One day after the session, as she's handing you payment for the session, she asks, how does it feel taking the devil's money? You know, drug and John money. My question for you is, how would you respond to this client? More specifically, would you continue to take this client's payment? And whether you select yes or no, which personal values do you think are going to maybe make this situation a little difficult for you? Both of these scenarios are really designed to help you start to think about your own values and your own belief system. Um, so we all come into the therapy room as much as we try to be value free with some set of values and we can't escape those. And that initial gut feeling that you maybe felt when you were trying to decide who are you going to bring to the dinner party or when you were trying to decide, do I take this money is a hint about some of the values that you have. Some other topics that you might find difficult to address in therapy are things like abortion. Whose choice do you think it is? Right to die, do you support assisted suicide or not? Uh, divorce, do you believe that it can be helpful or that it never is? Uh, and capital punishment, are you for it, are you against it? Uh, so I want you to start to think about as we work through this uh, presentation today, do you have any values or beliefs that you think might be difficult to keep out of the therapy room? I can tell you that the answer is yes. Uh, where the work will, be, will end up having to be done is with figuring out what those are for you. Okay. So why begin with values? Some of the decisions that we make in the therapy room are indeed dictated by law or by ethical code or by tradition, standard of practice. However, most of the decisions that we will face clinically are grounded in what's called an ethical dilemma. This is because we have perhaps limited experience, we haven't really thought things through, um, or it's just because the things that we face are not very clear cut in this type of work. Now the lack of clear cut answers to dilemmas that we might face can be frustrating, but by talking about them and dialoguing about these issues, we can become better clinicians and become better equipped at managing these situations when they arise in the therapy room. Um, so in your clinical practice and in this class, we're going to strive for balance. First, we need to be aware of internal factors that influence us. 
So things like our values and our beliefs. Okay? Our values influence decisions in all areas of our life. They move us toward or away certain actions. For example, inviting certain people to dinner or taking money or not from others is influenced by your values. However, before you can engage in meaningful discussions, you need to have a firm grasp of the law and ethical codes. And that's what we're gonna primarily work on in this class. Said another way, uh, this quote here by Pope and Vasquez, um, awareness of the ethical codes is crucial to competence in the area of ethics, but the formal standards are not a substitute for an active, deliberative, deliberative excuse me, and creative approach to fulfilling our ethical responsibilities. Perhaps the most difficult deliberations involve conflicts between the law and the therapist's deepest values. Basically, the law and ethical codes provide us with general standards that act as a starting point for our decision making, but they're really not clear or explicit enough to deal with every situation that you're gonna face clinically. There's no simple answer in many of these cases. So because I can't give you simple answers for the complex situations you're gonna encounter, we're gonna work on developing a balance between your internal values that guide you and influence your decisions and the external, the ethics, the laws, so that you can engage in critical thinking. This will help you to develop a personal perspective on ethical practice as a clinician that is within the limits of the professional codes and the theory that you choose to work with. Okay, so what do values influence? Therapy really isn't the type of job, excuse me, go back one. Therapy really isn't the type of job where we can claim that our values have no effect. You're not working, doing some monotonous task over and over where your opinion and your perspective just doesn't matter. You're not working at a bank or you're just counting money. You are engaging in dialogue and interaction with diverse people and you bring your own uh, set of values and beliefs into that room. Um, so we need to pay attention to values. We can't ignore them. We can't pretend they don't exist. As much as we attempt to be um, non-judgmental, that doesn't take away from the fact that we bring something to the table. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that our values influence, both our own and our clients' values, is where and if outside help is sought. Okay, so people differ on how they experience pain on how they label symptoms. Is it depression? Is it um, some other medical problem? Is it you just need to get over it? Um, and so on. People differ on how they express their symptoms and what they believe causes the symptom. For example, if a client believes that their symptoms are a punishment from God, coming to you for therapy isn't gonna help with that. So they might go and seek help from a church or from a pastor or some other religious leader. Um, people might also have a full set of beliefs, attitudes, and expectations about therapy itself. What is it? What am I going to get from it? Is it okay to go to therapy? Is it shameful? Are you going to just tell me what to do so I can fix it? All of those things, those beliefs are influenced by our values. Our values also influence our role as a therapist and what we believe that is. The mere fact that you've decided to choose this profession and to seek uh, this type of work says something about your value system. Why did you choose to become a therapist? Is there something in your value system that says that your worth is based on helping others or that there is um, meaning behind that type of work? Your values are also going to influence the type of mod modality you choose. Are you more psychodynamic, rooting uh, problems in the past, or are you more here and now focused? Uh, they're gonna influence who you want to work with. Do your values tell you that certain people are not worth helping in therapy? Do you rank certain people's problems as more severe than others or more worthy of help? And what do you think your job as a therapist is? Is your job to teach clients better behavior? 
Is it to make your client happy? To help your client adopt better values? To be a blank slate where they just put everything on you? All of the above, none of the above. Whatever that is for you is informed by your values. So how do we develop awareness of our values? Not having awareness is a fatal flaw. It's what places you at risk of doing something that could harm your client um, at the worst, or at the very least, causing you to miss something really important about your therapeutic relationship with that person. Okay. Um, so check your vis vision. Try to figure out how do you approach situations? What are your beliefs about therapy? Um, be sensitive to difference. Acknowledge it. Uh, confront difference when you are when you encounter a client who's different from you, don't shy away or fear that, but use it as a way of learning from the client, as a way of joining with the client, okay? Um, ask questions that are going to intentionally expose you to difference. For example, talking to colleagues of different social identity groups. Um, accepting a range of normality. There's no one normal. Um, so, we need to remember that our clients are people, that in certain cultures, pathology is normal, um, and really allow our clients to tell us what is healing for them, what, does, uh, what do they hope to get out of therapy, um, and accepting that. Um, and then examine our own biases and fears. We're never blank slates. Um, and with this, we need to recognize limitations. We can't always cure or solve everyone's problems, and this is okay. Right? So consider a couple who needs to divorce. Your values may tell you this is totally bad and you failed as a therapist because this couple's gonna divorce. But is that really true? Right? Or consider uh, clients who don't wanna be in therapy. Right? How much effort are you willing to put forth as the clinician when there's a client who doesn't want to do the work? Right? What do your values say about that? And then also consider that there are lots of things outside of our control, um, things like funding, resources, um, DCFS involvement that might influence the success of therapy. Okay. Uh, so you can start to consider all of those things for yourself. So here's a vignette um, that we're gonna read and we'll work through some of the slides. Okay. So Aaron is a 27 year old African American who's beginning his first job after receiving his master's degree in social work. He has experience through his internship during his graduate work. He's going to be conducting psychosocial assessments and some individual sessions. His clients are randomly assigned to him. He's told his first client is a Caucasian male who is self-referred due to depression. The intake coordinator goes on to tell him that he has a shaved head and a tattoo of a swastika on the back of his neck. Prior to seeing the client for the first time, Aaron rearranges his office to make sure he has an escape route and reviews the agency safety plan. He reviews the client's history, which includes being raised by a father who was a member of the Aryan Nation's white supremacist group. On first meeting the client, Aaron feels frightened and apprehensive. He does not address any of these issues with the client. So our first set of questions, what assumptions has Aaron made about this client? It appears pretty clear that Aaron has assumed that because of his upbringing and because of his uh, potential appearance with the tattoos, that this particular client is a white supremacist. I think that's pretty fair to say that that's an assumption the client has made, the, sorry, the therapist has made. What personal beliefs may be challenged for Aaron in this situation? What does Aaron believe, for example, about race and privilege and race relations? Um, and his ability to help people who believe differently from him. What steps could he have taken to ensure the best care for the client? I think one of the things he could have done here is to try to suspend some of the judgment that he has and wait and discuss with the client himself whether or not he believes these things. And the last question, could you work with this client? So knowing what you know, being presented what uh, Aaron was presented, 
ask yourself honestly, and you don't have to share since we're not live, could you work with this client? Now let's add another layer to this and introduce the client whose name is Mark. So the client Mark never felt he fit in with his father's beliefs and values. When Mark met his current girlfriend, she had a positive influence on him in exploring his own values. He attempts to be unbiased and open in his approach to all people. So now we have Aaron's side, we have Mark's side. Here are some more questions. Do you think there have been any ethical violations on Aaron's part? And before I answer that, I wanna give you a minute to think about it. Okay, I think that there have been some violations on his part in that he's entered the therapy room with a biased, uh, judgmental approach. Um, and he has chosen not to discuss it with the client. Remember the very last line of the vignette says that he doesn't discuss any of it with the client. So he's entering um, with an attitude that could potentially do harm against this client. Uh, the next question, has he possibly harmed the client? And if so, how? Again, I'll give you just a minute here. So at the uh, at initial glance, you would likely think, well, no, it doesn't seem like he's necessarily harmed the client. It doesn't seem like he's said anything negative or like he's refusing to see him. But I would ask you to consider, can Aaron hide those beliefs so well that they aren't going to show up for Mark? Think about that. And then, again, could you work with this client? So now knowing what you know about Mark's perspective, has your opinion changed? Were you initially like, nope, not gonna work with that client, no thank you and now perhaps a bit more open, knowing that there's more to the story and having to kind of check what you in initially believed. So what ended up happening after they met? So Mark detects Aaron's discomfort, and during the third session, he confronts Aaron about his apparent fear and lack of discussing with Mark what his actual values might be. He continues telling Aaron that he does not believe he can help him due to his inability to explore these issues and the assumptions that Aaron has made about Mark. So this really brings us to that second question about has he harmed the client? Um, I'm going to go back one more. I think here we have a really clear indication that Aaron wasn't able to hide his belief or his opinion about Mark, that it came out in therapy and that it does appear that it has done some harm. At the very minimum, it has made Mark feel unaccepted in what is supposed to be a safe environment. And potentially, if we take this a little further, it's made Mark maybe feel like therapy isn't a good idea in general. If this person who's supposed to be non-judgmental and accepting and who has seen all these things can't accept me, can't look past these things about me and ask me openly, then maybe nobody can. Maybe this, this therapy thing is not for me. And so this behavior may have turned the client away from mental health treatment altogether, which could be very harmful. So what should Aaron do? He definitely needs to seek supervision. He needs to talk this through with his clinical supervisor. Um, and talk about his fears, his biases, where he messed up, and how, if at all, there's a way to fix this relationship. He definitely needs to give Mark a chance to discuss his upbringing, his belief system, and how it differs from his father's. Um, and he needs to see, Mark, are you willing to continue to work with me? And if he's not, Aaron should really make an effort to try to set Mark up for success by providing him with some referrals and reassuring him that therapy can be helpful. Okay, so to bring it back full circle, why values? I think this is a nice way of kind of laying this out. First off, you have beliefs and values, right? And your beliefs and values influence your professional decisions in the therapy room. As a therapist, they cannot be ignored. We just touched on the surface of that today. These professional decisions affect the client relationship 
just like we saw with Mark and Aaron, that relationship from the get-go was damaged and it's gonna need a lot of repair uh, if, if therapy is to be successful. So this means if you don't know yourself, your decisions will still be affected, but you'll be powerless and unaware and you may hurt your clients like it seems Aaron did. So we'll continue to consider values as we work through ethical dilemmas in the class, but it's really a challenge for you to start to think about what are my values and how might I see these coming out in therapy, whether I want them to or not. And this can then become work that you do in your own personal psychotherapy when you start seeing clients or before that. So there you go, lecture one.